So what's up everybody, it's Aaron Kaufman all the way out here at the Phillips County Raceway. And so Joe Bellum has been gracious enough and the whole staff at BST to get me into a sport modified dirt car. So three weeks ago I raced at Calhan, it was the first time I'd ever sat in one. This car is unlike any other race car I've ever driven, and we were racing on a, a quarter mile, right? Yeah, it was a quarter mile. Yeah, racing on a quarter mile track, and it was all new. Everything about it, I got a little car damage, had to get it fixed, we made it to the feature. I had a great time, I had so much of a good time, I came back, and right here at Phillips County, we're racing a 3 8 track. This track's a lot stickier, there's a lot more room on the track, so I ran last night, getting a feel for it, so we're going to jump back in the car tonight and see how things go. You know, on top of that, the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars are here, and they're fast. As fast as it feels in the car for me, they are twice as fast just watching on the outside. So definitely going to be a big show tonight. I'm happy to be a part of it. And uh, big thanks to the BST crew for getting me in a car and getting me out here on the track. So now, Aaron, I got a couple questions for you. Shoot, so what you got? When you're, when you're coming out here and you're, you're deciding to get into this kind of this kind of field, like, is it any different from what you've been doing before or is it, is it kind of feel very similar? So one of the things is like, as far as all the pavement racing I've done and road racing, um, the car's gripped up and we manage that. And so there is some similarity to the desert stuff to the, uh, the off-road racing. There is some similarity there. However, this is completely different. It's not like the road racing I've done. It's not like the hill climb stuff I've done. And it's not exactly like the desert racing. So it's like having to learn a new set of skills, to having to learn a completely new way of of driving a car and luckily I've had a lot of good pointers but the only way to get it done is to get in the car and turn some laps. You know that's that, that brings me to my next question so um, we've, we've noticed that a lot of these uh, the, the newer drivers they come in trying to like change the game in a sense like they, they, they want to make their, their mark. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you this ain't no change in no game I didn't even figure out what the game is yet <laughs> you know it's like so I go out here and squeeze the trigger and hope for the best and so far so no, it is, it's, a, it's a big departure from all the different kinds of racing and it's, uh, to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about the, uh, the sport mod or the A mods. It's like, it's completely different. I've been around them, but I've never built one. And up until three weeks ago, I had never driven one. So this is all very, very new to me. And I'll tell you one thing. So I'll tell you one thing. It's really been, you know, like every racing community I've been to, it's like they're always really open and it's like, I found some of the best people in racing, and uh, you know, here this series at this track, uh, Callahan, it's been the exact same. I've been surrounded by great people, and we had a great time. So, hey, you know, what else can you want? Sure. Um, any new, uh, new, new races that you've met that uh, you know, I mean, kind of give you even that, that old school spark, kind of see a little bit of yourself in them. You know, so for me, I'm always attracted to like. To, to wild stuff like really crazy build stuff and, and these cars have been sorted for such a long time like this is so like this does you you do feel like there's a connection to like your racing history this type of racing has been around for a very long time and so it's different from some of the high-tech stuff that I, I try and chase in like in the shop or in other kinds of racing so like there is definitely an old classic feel this but but it, the one thing that that doesn't minimize the speeds out here it doesn't I mean you're banging doors the cars are fast and you know it's like and they really take a punishment and so it's like this is a pretty kinetic form of racing, you know, and then on top of that, it's like there's a possibility of throwing hands in the pit, so it's very <laughs> kinetic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now, Joe, having a guy like you know, Aaron here, like, like, what does it help do for the sport? Well, uh, you know, anytime you can get new blood mm -hmm. in the sport, that's good blood. Amen. All right, and the thing, about, the thing about new blood is it generates even more blood, and that's what we're really after. Obviously, his celebrity status is, is a real good thing. And that he's a celebrity? Yeah, well, you know, or whatever. We're <laughs> <laughs> all celebrities in our own yeah. mind, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but, I mean, honestly, it's great that he's involved, but I just love seeing new people get involved because we got to keep that we got to keep that level up, otherwise we won't be doing this. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it is. It's not. I mean, it's not playing cards. I mean, it is. It's active. It is hard on your body, and so it's like ultimately, not to mention. I think any time that any of us get good on anything, what we want to do is we want to pass it on and share the knowledge with the next generation. And it's like, well, I feel like I'm coming into it a little late. I'm definitely happy to be late rather than never. You know, Speaking of new blood, I got one thing. So have you met this young lady? In, fa in fact, I have, and I saw her, I saw her uh, get a trophy last night in the stock car, and so definitely one of the fastest cars out here, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself, yeah, lady? Who are you? Yeah, I am Lainey Bellum, and I race IMCA stock cars. Yeah. Oh. 
That name sounds familiar. <laughs> you know anybody in this in this industry? I am his daughter. Oh, there is a connection. Connecting there. dots. Okay, so you know, what I mean, we got you know, I mean, my, my man, Mr. Aaron Kaufman. We got this young uh, young bright star and big dog, Mr. Joe. I want to appreciate you for this opportunity. You know, what I mean, absolutely. Got to you know, what I mean, just sit down with you for a moment. And uh, got anything else, big dog? All right. See you the we next one. We better clarify real quick, though. It's actually World of Outlaw Driver Sammy Swindell with the ASCS, so it's not a World of Outlaw race. Oh, I didn't it's, know. Yeah, it's, a, it's World. Of well, Outlaw. So here's the thing: we're still rolling. I'm an idiot. I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> so I just show up and hope for the best, and that was definitely not the best line. I got it all wrong. So he'll tell you what Sammy Swindell drives, because to me, it's just a it's just a go kart with a giant wing that makes a beautiful sound. <laughs> the, the, the one thing I want to talk about: it. we were talking about last night having a couple cocktails, which was good, but always watching the stuff that you guys do is actually more on the clock and, and you're not racing side by side sure, and sure, trying to sure. actually beat somebody yeah what's what what do you think about that i i think so so I'm, both oh no yeah oh yeah no I'll, I'll tell you you know uh so in road racing uh door-to-door -door stuff it's as fun the same way here yeah like so when you get a lot of cars and you're racing door-to-door -door, you're not running your fastest lap times because there's a lot of defense there's a lot of offense out there I personally, I love the fist fight on the track. I absolutely adore it, whether yes. we're driving spec Miatas, higher horsepower cars, or we get out here and it's like, I don't even know, what are we doing, 60, 65, 70 miles an hour here? Yeah. And it's like and bumping and pushing on each other. I really I really do like the fist fight out there. I enjoy it more now when I own the car. So yeah. in, a, in a rented car, it's yeah. like I'll keep my fighting to a minimum. Yeah. So. I got to tell you, as a drone pilot, being right there in the interactions when the cars are, you know what I mean, swapping paint, that's like the most immersive and the most fun to film because like you guys are really fighting for something, you know. When you film a lot of other things where there's not necessarily the competition of trying to get across that that, that, sure. that line at the same time, there's not as much, you know what I mean, a fight in there. It's more about technique and style. Sure. It's so much more fun to be out there with the race cars that are really pushing and trying to get to that, you know what I mean, yep. that second line. You know, I don't, I don't know how Lenny feels, but it's like, for me, it's like one of the, the, there's two things I really, that I enjoy a lot. A, if you string together a really fast lap, it's always fun, right? Or you really yeah. feel like you got it together, regardless of the other cars. But the other one is whether it's coming off a caution or we're going to green, it's like whenever you bunch up and you'll stack up and then you what, anticipate and like, you know, they're going to go and you just, and roll into it for the hit, you know? So it's always anticipating the go and then everybody, and then also everybody's on top of each other just climbing into and uh you know turn one so it's an absolute mess you know so it's, it's like fun. that's a hoot yeah <laughs> you have you had that happen to you um yeah like on the starts it's definitely nerve-wracking and you have to be on your sure. on the starts. yeah because there's there's no room the cars are oh, sure. yeah. just at the beginning you can lose like two positions three positions on a start okay yeah and also gain positions on a start sure sure i mean it's, it's also one of those things like when i was talking about the fast line versus defensive line it's like if if you go for a high and go for a you know like you're going to have a nice fast corner problem is you'll get two cars up underneath you and they'll close the door on you they're not going to run the same lap time that you would have on that lap however they shut you down and you're three yeah. spots back and so it's one of those things so like you have to sometimes it's a give and take like you always want to get to where you're making the fast laps but at the same time though you have to keep air, all the wolves off your tail so uh, it's complicated. Now, is there is there a team presence in there? Yeah, there is a team presence. So my like, team got my team got a trophy over here. <laughs> <laughs> so what I mean is, but do you in in doing that, like when you're out there racing together? Yeah. Like, are you working together? They had team? Because, they hadn't taught me to shake and bake yet. I don't know anything oh, about okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, know I mean? you see that on the track, as like you know, what I mean, let's say it's more than one person on the team. Yeah, yeah. And they work together Absolutely. to push you out. Maybe one of them doesn't have a fast car. One of them's faster. So they kind of use that to push you. Can, yeah, because your team defense. is wider, you know, if, if you can do that. But I, I don't know if that's, if you see a lot of hair, to be honest, I'm doing everything I can to keep the car pointed the right direction. <laughs> so, you know, I've got a really good, I've, so that's the one thing is like, while I'm in the car, I've got the best seat to the racing here. It's like, my racing's not exactly competitive yet, but I do get a great view. <laughs> you know, on that, I know, I'm not on, I'm not on screen, but either way, Joe, how does he take his racing experience, his previous racing experience and apply it here so when we first talked and he was a little concerned i really wasn't because the reality of whatever type of racing you're doing you feel it in your butt your hands <laughs> everything sure. it, it's a feel yeah I, I try to tell people when we help people we do a lot of research development well, with people driver and, and development driver yeah. development and all that stuff and i tell people you got to feel it you yeah. got to feel it you got you're not necessarily watching it and seeing it you got to feel it and and I knew you had the feel. 
And anybody that gets Hope in to. <laughs> that, that has raced something else yeah. typically has that feel. Yeah, the, I feel the same way, like in drones, different feel, but like you, you can change the type of drone, but if you fly, you fly. Yeah. So is yeah. it the same way when you're when you're when you're riding behind cars? Obviously different mechanics say, and things like that matter, but if you know it, do you know it or is it So just so yes or no. So I'll I'll be very specific about the things that I that I battle with just in last night and then the weekend before, right? Is uh, so I feel like I've got a decent feel for it, like you talked about. I feel like that, you know, that comes along with you and that translates to every one of the race cars, no matter what kind of car it is, no matter what weight or power level, right? But the one thing out here, the technique, right? It's like how much do you throw in versus throttle oversteer, right? Wow. It's like how much are you pitching? It's like how aggressive do you want to get with that car? How much do you want to block that car? It's like do you want to hold throttle all the way clear off the end and then whip under throttle or do you want to use the throttle to reset the car? So it's like you have all these options. There's a lot of tools in your toolbox to how you move the car around. And I don't know which ones are appropriate for what, for like if the track's drying out, do we want to move to this? If it's gripping up, if I'm in a fight with somebody, do I, do I, does that open the door too much? It's like these are things that I don't know from experience experience and so it's like the the car feeling the car feels okay but there's I'm leaving I mean I'd be willing to bet I'm leaving 15 miles an hour out there I'm probably leaving a handful of seconds on my lap times just because like I don't know the techniques I feel that I feel good with the car as far as the feel goes but as far as flying it and knowing the right technique to use I'm still putting that together in fact that the thing I'm chasing is putting together back-to-back -to -back laps that look exactly the same because every lap it's like, yeah. well, we'll try this. Oh, no, that didn't work. I'll try another one. Oh, that worked pretty good, you know? And the so whole it's thing just for repetition. Though. Yeah. The whole thing about that is exactly laps. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Sammy Swindell, all right? I can't even imagine how many laps that guy has. Quite a few. But but the reality is Somewhere every lap 10, he does, he probably can still learn something, and, and he gets that feel even that much more. So your so. deal is you'll get better every, every race. I mean, I'm confident of that because mm -hmm. laps is what it's all about. With Laney, for example. I mean, we, we're trying to go anywhere and everywhere, laps and also different venues. Yep. Uh, people that get stuck in their own zip codes. Oh, own zip code because racers. you because you learn that track. Yeah, you learn yeah, that right. track, and they stay there, and they don't get out of their zip codes. Yeah, that's the worst thing yep. in the world. Because then you get com comfortable, and you think you know everything. But when you come out to the big world and go to a different racetrack yep. here or there, because you've different. got long tracks, skinny tracks, wide tracks, flat tracks, rough tracks, oh, smooth tracks. Oh, I would, and, and I would say that just between the the two tracks that I've been on total in my life when it comes to dirt car is Callahan and here these are radically different tracks yeah. and in fact oh, I, yeah. I even I even found in the first three laps like oh you drive this track different yeah, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's like you just feel it and you know the one thing I've noticed about the different tracks you know I mean I've been to EPIR I've been out here you know I know there's a difference between concrete and dirt but one thing I've noticed is that the way you get in and out of the turns can totally drastically change up that lap. Change everything. Like, I mean, but I mean, I see, you know, when people come in on the outside, try to cut inside. Yeah. They try to cut off their, their opponent, you know what I mean, hit that. There, know, there's yeah, there's a lot of different techniques. It swings out, yep. and a lot of times they end up turning out right there. Yeah. But if you cut in too close, you may get pushed off the track. True. There, so it's just oh, that's what you mean when you talk about repetition and timing. Well, you want you want to get you want to get consistent. Once you get consistent, then you got a high flow rate, right? Like you're just you're on, and so now you can work with someone. Now, if someone keeps trying to get you and you know trying to undercut you on the corner and push you wide on it, or someone's trying to bully you into the corner. Like when you're when you've got your laps down and you know where to be and when to be and how hard to flick and where you're gonna uh, where you're gonna drive the car to. Now you can work with the other cars, right? But for me, it's like my, I'm just worried about jamming up someone that's twice as fast as me, you know? And so so the other cars don't have mirrors on them so I just kind of guess where the other cars might be so no it is it is different there's a lot of things to learn and like Joe was talking about laps you know it's just like ultimately once you once you get a groove down you can become you once you've got a groove down in your competitive you can really engage the other drivers you can really get in the fight and like and I've managed to get in a little bumping and pushing around and stuff but ultimately it's like I just don't have the speed there but I really feel like when we talk about laps it's like I think that this is something you can develop you can get in the groove in a handful of races maybe yeah. you know half a season maybe a season yeah, it takes so, a little bit of time and yeah getting comfortable and I got I a mean, question for you Miss Laney so <clears throat> I, I know you've been a child prodigy <laughs> Um, what's been kind of your your uh, your experience growing up in, you know, this is your dad. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, what I mean, that's a lot of weight. Yeah. And you know, you're not a lady, one of these young boys out here. You're a young lady. Yeah. Um, what are the kind of pitfalls of you know, what I mean, growing up, you know, what I mean, in the shadow, so to speak, and also trying to make your bones and let it be known who the hell Laney yeah. is. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he. I've grown up with him going to the tracks, us promoting tracks, 
um, and obviously him being a prodigy. So that there was just a lot of weight on my shoulders because I want to be just as good as him, you know? Maybe even better. Yeah, I was going to oh, say. Yeah. 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 That, that came off a little political at first. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, even better. Yeah. yeah. There some choice words. Yeah. Well, yeah. Interesting. If I can, I can be a little better. Some um, would say you might already be on a better track than him. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know what I mean, uh, has it been any, uh, I mean, let's be honest, has it been any kickback, you know what I mean, being a lady in the sport? Um, I Do people show you the respect? Sorry. To I think they show me more respect, honestly, because when they look at me, they say a young lady, and they think, oh, like, she can't be that good. But when they see me out on the track, I think that gains their respect for me because I can compete with them. You kick their ass. I kick their ass. Okay. I mean, sometimes, see, this ain't that uh, the other network where people say all the politically correct things. Yeah. This is where we tell the truth. Yeah. With an F. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the truth with an F. So let's tell the truth. They respect you because you kicking their ass. Yeah. They're, right. ju they're just happy that their dad's not out there racing with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they like racing with them. Yeah. Like yeah, because she's nice to them after she whoops their ass. Yeah. yeah. You rub it in their face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been great having a race. I mean, uh, it's honestly, I do this for an escape of reality. I do this so I don't wear orange instead of red, you know, that lock up penitentiary stuff. <laughs> right? This is my escape from mm -hmm. all of that stuff with the negativity in the world. So I do need to get back out racing, which we've got some late models and we're going to do. But I'll, I'll tell you what the second best thing and maybe just as good is watching my daughter's race because uh, Peyton also races and she's working on cars. So it's pretty cool to see that. So that's that's the only thing that's come close to me racing is watching them and helping them. So that, that's a pretty cool deal. So what? how does that feel as a dad? You know, high performance, you've been in this world before. You know what it's about. You know the, the pluses, the minuses, the dangers. And then you're you're letting your little one go out there and race. Like, how do you how do you let go? I yeah. mean, the way he puts it. How do you push? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I I, I don't want to get uh, biblical with you, but I believe the big guy upstairs says, when it's your time, it's your time. So whatever we do in life, I say go for it. So I, I'm really not worried about the dangers with what she's doing compared to what I do or you're doing. Because it is what it is at the end of the day. And when your number's up, your number's up. Yes, yeah, right. Whatever you want to believe, however, however you want to do that. You know so, I mean? so that element truly is out. Sure. I, I'm not worried about her whatsoever. I, I, I know the cars are safe. Obviously, build good cars, safe cars. You got safety equipment. And, and the and the reality is, I honestly think we're probably it's more dangerous to drive down the Valley Highway. It's dangerous. Than, to, it's dangerous to get here than it is on the track. Yeah. yeah. Than, than on the race track. Yeah. So, so that element out of it is good. So the, and the other thing is is just seeing her mature and actually be able to do it and race with these guys. So the, the stock cars they call is the division too tough to tame. Right. Stock cars are known to bump and grind. Yeah. They get a little rough. I think the average weight of our stock car drivers is about 280. You guys yeah. fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. What are you trying to say? Here, There's sir. some big boys. There's I some am big a boys. Yeah. young man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the majority of them are some big boys. I just identify as thick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so thick boys are us. The, yeah. the first part, you know, I, I was I was a little intimidated by that, just putting her in, it, you know, the division too tough to tame. But she ran the hobby division for a year or two before that. And then I was just like, we, we run stock cars, and I was like, this is dumb. We're about spending the same amount of money on her hobby. We'll just put her in a stock car. And everybody's like, really? Now? You know, yeah. whatever. She got in it, and I mean, it was honestly probably a couple weeks, and you fit right in. Yeah. It might have been a little slow go right in the beginning, because I think she was a little bit intimidated. But then when she figured out, hey, this is, yeah. this is no different than what I was doing, and these guys, I can still race with these guys. And that, that's really cool. So I'll, it's good to see that. I'll tell you another aspect. Uh, I'd be interested to get your take on it. But for me, it's like nothing against ball and stick sports, but I don't feel, I feel like whenever you work on a team, it's like you always have a bunch of other people you can blame for the failures, yeah. for the yeah. inadequacies. Uh, yes. And so I feel like getting children, and there's a lot of young drivers out here, you know, and the smaller cars, and there's a lot of variety out here. I think that it does more, it does more for the children 
that get into motorsports, it's a high threshold of entry. I know yeah. that. But when you get in there, it's like you have to understand that other people's safety and lives are in line. There are rules in here, and you have to yeah. follow them. If you don't follow them, you don't get to do it. Yeah. So you understand this really this, this hard structure. Yeah. And once that, that flag goes green, once the light goes green, you inside your car is all that. If you don't get the result you want, that was your yeah. fault. You didn't yeah. produce that. And you have to learn that lesson hard. And then to be able to, once again, the high cost of entry. It's like if, as a child, if you're not doing the things that you need to be doing in the family, at school, it's like the opportunity to go race the car may go away. And it's not, and like I said, I think that it's more impactful to have children in motorsport. I think they grow up faster, they grow up stronger, more resourceful than if they play stick and ball sports. So I'm always happy to come to the track and see a lot of kids with a lot of small cars. And it's actually so much, we, we live in such a world today of everybody's a participation member. Yeah. Um, this ain't a participation medal type of a deal. Yeah. Right? yeah it's not you have to dig in, you have to work, <laughs> yeah. and if you don't put in the uh, work, there's nothing going to come out at the end. Exactly. I think this is a better teaching tool, not just this, but just hand, like you yep. said, stuff that you're not just, you know what I mean, hey, yay, you participated well, you know and also with the, with the cars like you learn to front load the work right so races I mean there's what happens in the cockpit but they're won and lost in the garage if you don't do the prep if you don't do the homework yeah. if you don't bring the right car then it's like you're wasting your money you're wasting the effort and it's like I, I really do think that it's a I think it's a great experience for for dad for family for junior what you know whatever it is I really think that that we have a good time but I think there's a lot of learning life that happens you know between the flags yeah, yeah. All right, so Joe, I got a question for you, then we got to wrap it up. So, first of all, where are we at? One more time. Phillips County Raceway, Holyoke, Colorado, which what is time? northeast corner. All right, now, when is the next uh, venue? So, tonight our racing will start at 5 p.m. with the sprint cars qualifying, then we'll go right into heat races, and then uh, our main events, we'll have an intermission, and go into uh, main events. We'll be all done by 10 o'clock. And then after this week, when's the next time that these guys we'll, can take a look at you? We'll go back to uh, El Paso County Raceway, and then we come out here once a month. So anybody can go on to bstracing.com. So BST Racing on YouTube. And then, of course, we do a lot on, on Facebook still. We do a lot of that stuff. You got Joe Vellum, uh, BST Promotions, Joe Vellum. And then each track has a page, so you got a Phillips so County page. you can page. watch live. So footage on, on where at on the live footage you go to bstproductions.tv well that's going to do it for today ladies and gentlemen this is aaron kaufman mm -hmm. this is joe bellum i'm also fpv behind the camera we got black mamba and we're out to two studios mm -hmm. uh, i want to appreciate you guys and uh stay tuned to next week thank you <laughs>